Week 10 of the NFL season was probably the most bizarre season of the league this week. And it really just serves to tell the tale that any given Sunday is still a thing. And then any given Sunday really, really matters. Um, let's start out first with the Chargers and Raiders. Now, Phillip Rivers just looked awful in this game. You know, he kept throwing interceptions to the Raiders. And so, of course, the Raiders get the victory, which is kind of surprising. But, I mean, they've been kind of under the radar for a little bit now. They could be making a push for the playoffs. You know, the, the Chargers, same thing. You know, they, they're, they're still kind of under the radar, you know, that type of team. But unfortunately, it was a Thursday night game, so I, I really wasn't going to pay attention to that. It didn't even matter if teams were good or not. And it'll be the same case when we talk about a game, a certain game, later on. Um, Jets, Giants. Boy, the Jets and Giants defense is terrible. But ultimately, um, I guess the lesser of two evils won the game, which is always a good sign. Um, the Jets win 34-27 despite Daniel Jones you know, going off, you know. It is what it is. Did you see Jamal Adams just just take the ball from Daniel Jones? He just took it from him like it was nothing. The first real surprise of the Sunday slate was the Falcons just destroying the Saints. You know, it was absolutely disgusting. You know, it didn't even look like the Saints were doing anything, you know, offensively. Uh, the Chiefs, you know, Patrick Mahomes came back, but it doesn't even matter. The Titans get the victory, man. Let me tell you. What a great game that was, you know. You hate to see it for Patrick Mahomes because, I mean, the dude was going crazy. But ultimately, you know, the Titans just did just enough at the very end to get the victory. Oh, my goodness. The Bengals are still the only winless team in the NFL right now. Um, and, the, and the Ravens just absolutely destroyed 49-13. Lamar Jackson, you get your shades on, young man. You get your shades on, you know. You keep them on because, man... This is going to be electrifying to watch him play for years to come, I guarantee you. The second, I guess the second real surprise of the day was the Browns being the Bills. Now, the Bills, they've kind of suspect at times, you know, they've had an offense that really hasn't done much. But, you know, um, when the going got tough, the Browns found a way to get just enough to get a big victory. And, of course, the Bills missed the, the game when he kicked. Same thing with the Chiefs, or a game-tying kick. Very least, Bucks beat the cards. You think Jameis Winston throwing an interception or two would, you know, really mess things up? But no, nah. Buccaneers get the win. Bears bounce back on track. You know, they beat the Lions twenty to thirteen. Not much you can really say there. Dolphins do beat the Colts though. Very surprising game right there. I get, I get it. Joe Kelpie Brissett still out. But Brian Hoyer just played terrible. Threw a couple picks to the Dolphins, and now look at that. Look at that. Fitz magic. Fitz tragic has led the Dolphins to two consecutive victories. What kind of world are we living in? Who would have thought? Oh, my goodness. The Packers and Panthers game was a mess, a wild mess, filled with some things that were very, very questionable at times. You know, the ref issues, but there. Um, play calling, especially for Carolina. Who goes for two inside, you know, you, who goes for two with like 10 minutes left to go in the game or something like that, and you still had time, you got the ball back, you drive it all the way down, and boom, you get stuffed right then and there. CMC could not get into the end zone to get to get the Panthers, you know, close. I don't know what in the world Ron Rivera was thinking going for two there. Was it to cover the spread? Because I don't know. I don't, I don't pay attention to the spread. Steelers Rams was disgusting. It was a terrible matchup, honestly. Um, but you know, Jared Goff just does just enough to blow the game <laughs> for the Rams. So, um, and the Steelers defense, the Steelers is still in it. Hard to believe that they were down and out a month ago. Now they're back in the playoff hunt. And before we get to the uh, before we get to the disappointment that I have. Um, Seahawks finally, you know, they finally beat the 49ers. But, you know, the 49ers are finally no longer undefeated. They had to take a bad, had to take a bad field goal miss that went into the stands, you know, went into the bleachers, you know, for the Seahawks to 
get a big victory. And you know, Russell Wilson, he's that dangerous. He's that dangerous. That man can do man can do a lot of things, let me tell you. And finally, we'll talk about it here. Oh my god. I don't even want to talk about it, but you know what? We gotta. Vikings Cowboys. Let me tell you. Vikings. They're playing with the used Kirk Cousins. They're playing with the used the running backs, Dalvin Cook, and of course, you know, other guys that they have in the backfield. And of course, you know, they got a big fullback. You know, they use a lot of under center eye formation, you know. And so, what the, what the Vikings did all night long was they kept going outside zones, stretches, tosses, and the Cowboys just couldn't stop it, you know. And on the flip side, Dak was just balling out, you know, throwing for what, like 380 yards, something like that. And both Randall Cobb and, and Amari Cooper went over 100 yards for the game. So, what in the world went wrong? Well, even though Kirk Cousins did pass a lot, you know, he did what he needed to do. Um, you know, and but the real problem was the Cowboys run game. I don't know what in the world was going on. What was not working was the zone runs straight up the middle to Zeke. It was not working. Not at all. It was a third and two. We had the game in our possession. We could have won the game, um, you know, with, you know, maybe like less than a minute to go or something like that. But ultimately, it, 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 it didn't work out at all. Because, you know, you go with the zone run up the middle again, and it fails for like the 15th time that night. Because Zeke only had like under two yards, under three yards of carry, excuse me. And it just didn't work out. Did not work out. And the last pass that Dak threw was just not not the greatest pass. And with the Zeke, and it just wasn't working. The Dak to Zeke connection was not working at night. It didn't work at all. And. Really, we just got to fix the play calling. Very, very simple. Um, there are times that Keller Moore is, like, doing the right things, and then he just calls a play like that. You know, you can't blame Dak. You can't blame him at all. He did what he needed to do. I think we really need to blame the play calling, and you know, and the defense. You know, defense did not do a good job um, on Sunday night. Did not do a good job at all. You, you can't win games if you can't stop the zone run, stretch run, toss run to the outside each and every time. It, you know, it, was, it was a great duel. I'm pretty sure we'll probably see the Vikings again at some point. They're still, they're still in it. We're still tied for the division lead, though, uh, with the Eagles, which is unfortunate, but, you know, it is what it is. And you can't, you can't, you can't really change that, so. It's gonna do it. This video, first of all, we'll get the we'll get the week eleven preview out of the way very very quickly here. You know, and we'll talk about the um the playoff rankings, which are coming out later tonight as well. Because I'm pretty sure it's gonna be great. And then we're just gonna spend the rest of the week not doing anything unless there's a video coming up. Um, you know, it's whatever. That's gonna do it. See y'all in about 15, 20 minutes or so.